Syracuse's Rock Alternative, 95X. Syracuse Rock Alternative, 95X. I'm backstage at Chevy Court at the Great New York State Fair with a gentleman known as X Ambassadors. This is Adam, Sam, and Casey. These guys just got done playing one of the most bombastic sets I've ever seen. <laughs> I love it, dude. I, I, honestly, I, I've been in the industry for 24 years. I've been putting shows on for almost that entire time. I've seen over 5,000 shows, and this will probably go into my top five. Oh, thank you so much, man. That uh, really means a lot. It, the, really, your music, in fact, is uh, a self-described music nerd. It means a lot. It's uh, thank you, man. A strange time in the industry because there's so much shallow and vapid music. So when you hear a band come forward with yeah. something that's so emotionally charged and so heartfelt and honest, yeah. uh, it just takes you by storm. And I'll tell you, like from the the, the opening notes of. Uh, the first song I ever heard from you guys, I was instantly a fan. So, thank you, man. You know, as a fan, I just want to say thank you for being such pure musicians and uh, being able to put out such an honest and earnest release where in today's you, day and age, it's very difficult to get that from uh, a band at the level that you guys are at. Uh, so I have three questions. Yeah. One uh, was actually inspired by your performance today. Um, it's insane to me that not only are you one of the uh, most Pitch perfect singers. Oh, right now. stop For it, man. Thank uh, you. To play the saxophone, to play the bass, <laughs> uh, to get up there and rip that lead that you ripped, and Thank then you. to finish the set by jumping in on drums. Uh, is there anything <laughs> that you can't do? I'm not a very good piano player. Uh, I used to. I used good. to play. I can't himself. play the trumpet. I can't play the oboe. Adam can play the oboe. <laughs> I can't play the violin. Can't play the cello. There are tons of instruments I can't play. Uh, and even the ones I do play, I don't play them very. I can play them better. I'm not very good. It, it's but just cool to see you. somebody uh, that, that has the multifaceted musician mindset to be able to go up. Listen, there. I'm willing to try. You know, exactly. I'm willing to try. Exactly. You put so, it out there. Yeah. Um, so, question two. Uh, Within your music, there are elements that I pick up of soul and gospel and uh, obviously blues and rock along with hip hop. Uh, who are some of the artists that inspired you to actually make the music that you're making today? I mean, me and, so me and Sam grew up, I mean, our household was always full of all kinds of music. Dad had a huge record collection. Mom actually was a uh, cabaret, folk and jazz singer for uh, you know many years before she had met our dad. Um, and so, yeah, all sorts of, yeah, I mean, do you, you know, we could list them all. Yeah, who are you, you saying? You're yeah, well, I mean, my, our mom, like, used to, you know, listen to a lot of George Gershwin stuff, and, and uh, uh, we used to, you know, listen to musical numbers, Rodgers and Hammerstein, and uh, there's another one, she, uh, oh, I forget. But yeah, I and like, you know, folk singers like Carole King, and, and uh, Carly Simon, and uh, um, Laura Nero, and... Um, but yeah, we grew up listening to everything and I fell in love with soul music pretty early on, you know, Sam Cooke and Garnet Mims and Jackie Wilson and the, you know, the greats and yeah. Otis, Otis Redding, Aretha, yeah. you know, uh, Nina Simone. Um, and, but we also loved alternative rock, you know, like we all grew up <laughs> idolizing like Bands like the Chili Peppers and Coldplay and and you know Rage Against the Machine and Absolutely. Kings of Leon and the Strokes and and the White Stripes and bands like that like those uh, I I was really gravitated I gravitated toward those bands and hip hop you know like you listen to what like a lot of West Coast stuff right yeah like Dr Dre and I grew up in L A uh, Snoop Dogg and Tupac and now Kendrick and YG, but also lots of East Coast hip hop, Nas and Biggie and Eminem and just everything. We, in our era, growing up, popular music was hip hop and alternative rock. Like in the late '90s, like absolutely, yeah. pop music was like the Chili Peppers and Rage and you know all these amazing hip hop groups, and so that really, you know, was a huge influence for all of us. Yeah, so a little bit of a little bit of everything, man. Very cool, and it definitely shows in the product that Thank you guys turned out to be. Yeah, um, it's a little crazy. It's all over there. It's I, all over I, I the love place. it. I love, I love it too, love, man. We love it too. Anybody that's willing to just give it a shot, put it out there, and wear your your influences on your sleeve, and yeah, it, it made for an excellent album. Thank you, dude. Uh, my Thank third you. and final question. Yeah. Uh, so there's a YouTube video, and it's uh, I believe it's a secret session. 
Uh, it's the three of you, I believe, in a stone room doing unsteady, kind of at room volume. Uh, there's a little amp for the keys. There's a little amp for the guitar. You're you done. didn't. You didn't have a microphone. Hundreds. Um, and it was literally one of the just most breathtaking things I've oh, seen. Thank so, you, man. You know, it was one of those things we heard you were coming to the fair, so I start really diving into finding some live stuff because I want to see what the band's like live. We have so I, many of those acoustic videos. Yeah, yeah. It's hard I'm doing, to yeah. So, I, you know, in my head, it's like the album's so good, there's no way these guys are this good live. So I got to find that one thing that proves it to me. And I couldn't <laughs> find it, but I did come across uh, that one video, yeah. and it was one of those things where. We're sitting in the office, myself and the other gentleman at 95X that I work with, and we put it on, and it was, like, not even 15 seconds in, as soon as you hit the first couple of notes of the oh, song, man. like, thank you. hair on my arms, on just on end, goosebumps the whole nine yards, and it's something that I've found myself now showing everybody that I possibly oh, can. Oh, dude, uh, thank you. I've got to be that guy that, like, hey, have you heard this band yet? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and with you guys, it, it's everybody's already heard it. You know what I mean? Oh, Renegades yeah. is everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Unsteady's starting to get everywhere. We're yeah. just starting to bump low life out now oh, on the station. Uh, it's getting a huge response. People Awesome. seem to really really love it uh so with the secret session thing is my question is how hard are those situations because in that video in particular uh being a musician myself you have no monitor yeah you're singing into the air uh yeah. I, I believe you both had like probably little five watt combo yeah. things that you were playing through we've been lucky to have many opportunities to practice doing that and actually before signing with the label and actually the way we got signed to the label is Dan Reynolds and Imagine Dragons saw one of those videos of us doing unconsolable acoustic. I love and that that, song. that is what got us signed, literally. So we had been doing those acoustic things for six, seven years now. And it's, it's not, you know, sometimes it's actually harder when you have monitors and stuff. When you can just sit in a room and mix yourself by just playing at a certain volume, it's pretty easy. But sometimes you have a monitor guy that doesn't know what they're doing or, you know, tech, the more technical stuff there is going on, the more room for technical difficulties. And sometimes just having a room with acoustics and your instruments is the best. In a situation like that, it's very uh, easy to tell if a song sucks or not. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. When you, you know, strip so it that's down. kind of a, a litmus test for us, you know, with, with some of our, our songs. We... We write them, we record them, and then we figure out how to do them acoustic. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it doesn't sound great acoustic, but there are some times where it just, like, fits really, really well. And then we decide to, sometimes we decide to go back and re-record it more like the acoustic version. That's what we did with, Un with Unconsolable on our first EP. We also, uh, we even recorded an, an acoustic version of uh, Gorgeous uh, and decided to put it on VHS 2.0. Uh, because we liked the way it sounded so much, it was so different from the original electric version on the uh, on the album. Yeah, you know, all the time. That's you know, I don't know. Those acoustic shows they can be hit or miss, but when when they hit, they're something special. You know, they they really feel very personal and very intimate. You know, it's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for Dude, taking thank the time you. to talk to us today. Um, hey, compliments to your barber, too. He <laughs> did a really good job. We have the same. Yeah, <laughs> it works. yeah, baby. Excellent. Once again, ex-ambassadors Adam, Sam, and Casey. Check out the release, VHS 2.0. It's got some killer extras on it. I promise you, you're going to love the record. It's Dixon Live backstage, Chevy Court, New York State Fair for Syracuse Rock Alternative, 95X. Uh -huh.